right, everyone. Welcome. I hope you're all doing really well today. I'm going to talk a little bit more subdued uh, today because I'm working on a giant project behind the scenes and I have had to talk a lot today already. Hoping that, uh, that I'm going to make it through this stream okay with my voice. There are a few things I want to talk about before we get into Flareon's run. So the first of them is just a little follow-up from last week's video, which was Heatran in Pokemon Platinum. During that video, I mentioned a tech error that I had when filming the run. I had to stop filming and restart. I'm collecting replay files for my playthroughs, and so I uh, went back, replayed the replay, and discovered that by doing that, there was a two and a half minute time discrepancy. Um, yeah, that's not okay when we're timing these runs and ranking Pokemon. At least in my mind, it's not okay. Um, I want to collect accurate results, and I was not okay with just sweeping this discrepancy under the rug and not telling you about it and just continuing as usual, going like, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, frame discrepancies and frame rate discrepancies uh, need to be eliminated at all costs. Um, so yeah, speaking of all costs, uh, I have uh, purchased a new CPU, a new motherboard, and new RAM, and installed all of it into my computer. <laughs> Did it last night, which was not a great idea. Should have waited for Sunday until my release was done, but uh, I installed all the stuff um, to hopefully get better frame rates in Platinum. I also, people did reach out for testing uh, the, so the hardware. I tested an uh, i9-14900K, and then I uh, tested also a Ryzen 7950X, and um, the uh, the results that I found is like the Intel processor was extremely capable, um, but I found like the tests that I got from the Ryzen were a little bit more stable in terms of frame rate. So I decided to stay on the AMD platform and go for the Ryzen CPU. Um, another big impact on this is the fact that my my old setup had DDR4 whereas I have DDR5 now, uh, and then I have also used like the XMP configuration or whatever to boost the speed of the RAM even more. Uh, yeah, I it, it has improved things, so let's just take a quick look. Um, this is Pokemon Platinum running on my new system. You can see here we are in a Pokemon Center, which is a very small map and we are hitting 239 to 240 frames a second pretty much all the time, which is the target frame rate for four times game speed because the DS uh, is essentially like 59.9 some frames per second, I believe, maybe 59.7. Look it up if you're really curious, uh, but it's it's just under 60. This has to do with some other tech, pro uh, tech issues and stuff, why frame rates are not always exact. Anyways, we're that's be, that's so that's why we're shooting for 239 as our goal frame rate at the end. Um, yeah. So if I go to a different location, um, you'll notice that oh no, they're going to talk to me. Uh -huh. Okay, well it's not that long. Um, there's a lot of dialogue in this game. If I go to a different location, that sort of thing, it stays at 239 frames. It's really consistent. We can go in here. You see it. I dropped like one or two frames there, but it's through transitions, so that's not a big deal. But then, we're going to exit the building and go into Jubilife City, and I'm going to show you all what happens. Uh, <laughs> we lost like 40 frames a second, 35 frames a second, just by going into a large map. Now, the fact that I'm getting 200 frames here is really uh, to the credit of the Ryzen CPU and the DDR, because on my former setup, I was getting 135 to 120 frames a second in this location. Sometimes not even 120 frames. So I've received a massive performance boost, but it still is slightly unstable. I tested this also on my wife's PC, who is using a worse processor, and for some reason she is able to get better frame rates here in Jubilife City by about 15 frames a second. Um, the Ryzen... 7950X that I tested um, 
And you'll see it here when I go through the gate, I speed up. My running speed speeds up in the gate and then slows down in the city just slightly because the frame rate changes, which impacts how quickly I'm playing the game. Obviously, we want to stabilize this, get it to 240 frames uh, as much as possible, maybe with some drops in large locations if it's just not possible to get it uh, high enough. But the test that I did with the other Ryzen um, 7950X, we were able to get like the low number was like 220 in this location, but usually like 230, 235, that sort of thing. So very little discrepancy from from the goal target frame rate. Um, so I'm hopeful that through some optimization and maybe system settings, updates, that sort of thing, that I am going to be able to push this hardware to where I need it. Uh, if not, we will be getting um, a performance boost in Platinum. Now, of course, this comes with the uh, obvious caveat of just all the runs that I've done to this point have been at the lower frame rates. So, of course, those Pokemon are going to get slower times and I will have to deal with that at some point. Luckily, I have started recording replay files. So there are some runs that I will be able to retime on different hardware and then update results. But anything from Giratina and back, uh, I do not have replay files for. So that data will be lost, unfortunately. Um, we can do some multiplication and uh, that sort of thing, and uh, counting frames is not the best unless we have a very exact, explicit frame counter from the game. Um, that will be possible in the future, but for the former runs again, like, it's it's just, it's not going to be possible. Okay, so those are the Platinum updates. Hopefully we'll be able to resolve it soon and get more stable frame rates. Um, the next two videos have already been filmed, so they'll be with the old hardware just know that when you see those videos but coming coming in like three months i guess for all of you there will be uh performance upgrades to platinum okay let's talk about some other changes that i made uh to my tier list i have updated a bunch of things on here because i found errors and i also needed to include re-rankings that we have done recently so uh, Vaporeon and Jolteon have been re-ranked. Vaporeon has moved from the top of the A tier into the kind of middle to end of the S tier between Vileplume and Nidoqueen. Jolteon was re-ranked, so it moved from at uh, the top of the D tier into the middle of the C tier, just behind Arcanine and ahead of Poliwag. <laughs> By the way, I have a better far-fetched result, but I'm planning to release it at some point, so I I'm not going to spoil that yet. I also have updated and corrected, uh, updated slash corrected Magmar's placement. It was formerly behind Polyrath and Raticate, but uh, the final playthrough that I did in the video uh, placed it ahead of those two. I just never made the update to the tier list, despite one specific person always telling me that I needed to. So that is updated now, and we should not have any uh, problems going forward. Uh, or, yeah, it's updated now. Magmar should be in the right place going forward from here on out. Yeah. Uh, next one, I added Lapras to the tier list. I have not ranked Lapras for a while, and I've consistently, when I want like to just blow off some steam and play a run for fun, I kind of just play Lapras, and I've done it maybe three times behind the scenes. Uh, like, three three rounds. Uh, so I've done, like, another, like, six or seven Lapras playthroughs. All of them have not gone how I wanted. I've been really shooting for a sub 50 minute time, but it's just not capable of it at the current time. Um, you need luck. There's a lot of luck that's required with Lapras to just squeeze it its time lower than about 52 to 53 minutes. That sort of seems like if I sat down to play three or four Lapras runs now, I would say probably gonna get a time of 52 to 53 minutes. Um, if I got something like 55, I wouldn't be surprised, but I would be very surprised if I got something lower than 52. So I'm just going to rank it for now, and then uh, maybe I'll make another video on it in the future if it's absolutely required. But if you want to see more Lapras stuff, I already have a video for it. It's very old, and then I have a live stream from, I think, last year. Um, I updated Squirtle's position. It was behind Kadabra, but its results are, in fact, faster than Kadabra by... 10 seconds so i have changed that that was an error apologies for the error scyther has also been corrected it was behind Firo in the tier list but its results are eight seconds ahead of heroes so i have also updated scyther finally i've added Mankey to the f tier um yeah i've done a bunch of Mankey streams and stuff like that uh 
I'm hope I'm not getting this wrong and it's placed somewhere else too. I have a lot of different results for Mankey, but this is the most, I, I believe the most recent one, 1 hour, 23 minutes, and 34 seconds. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and then I will update it again. But figured I'd just add it because I have no intention of doing a, like a, um, a redo for that video at the current time, and I'm not intending to stream it in the near future, so I figured I'd just put it on the tier list. Yeah, um, the last thing I want to talk about is just like the the sheer number of mistakes that I found in this tier list when just going through the Excel sheet and the graphic, and I was like, how are there so many mistakes? There were also um, graphical mistakes where some Pokemon did not have bilinear filtering, so they looked like trash, specifically Zapdos. Go back and check that out in my previous videos. Anyways, I've corrected all that. Um, I just wanted to say something, which is, Growing up, I didn't know I had ADHD, and I remember sitting down to fill out like a form, like for like a doctor or something like that, and they'd be like, write your name here and your date of birth. And like, I'd write my name down and do it so slowly and like carefully, and then I'd check it like three times being like, did I spell anything wrong? And then I'd like check my birth date and stuff like that, and you like hand that thing and they look at it and they're like, hey, there's like a big mistake here. Like, like can you just like correct this? And I'm like, how is that possible? This happened with schoolwork and all that stuff. It just like... My feeling was always, no matter how many times I checked things, there were still mistakes, and no matter how slow I went, there were still always mistakes. And I still kind of have that feeling with these tier lists. I record all the data, I write it down into another, like, another separate thing, I take screenshots, I check all the things, I, like, cross-reference everything when I'm, like, putting the data together and making the graphics, and then, somehow, when I release everything, it's just like, oh, there's, like, five mistakes in this graphic. I don't know, I'm doing my best. I am really going to strive this year for more accuracy in my videos, so hopefully you'll all notice that and it will pay off by the end of the year. Okay, um, yeah, uh, someone said there is a, uh, like, or, whoa, S and A tier are getting crowded. Yeah, it's just because, like, my results are getting better on average and I'm playing a lot of fully evolved Pokemon. There are not very many first stage Pokemon left to complete. I did a lot of them already because I didn't want to do versus videos a long time ago because they take forever to produce. Speaking of versus videos taking forever to produce, Saturday's release is going to be, well, the release that I intend to, re or the, the video that I intend to release on Saturday is Electrode versus Magneton. I've said before, um, yellow version hates electric types. It hates electric types so much. And I don't actually know if this video is going to be ready for Saturday. Um, with the tech problems and everything, we have not been able to get ahead in terms of production. So there is no other... Um, there is no other video ready that I could replace it with. So if, we, uh, if there is no release on Saturday, I apologize. I may do a stream then, but... I want to ensure that the video is going to be really good because it's going to be really long and I don't want to just rush it out and go, ah, the second hour of the video is just going to be like thrown together, it'll be fine. Um, so apologies if there's no release on Saturday, I just figured I'd let everyone know because I'm going to get a ton of comments on all my previous videos with people asking where's today's uploads, I'm really disappointed. Um, and I know there's only like 300 people here so it's... <laughs> Most people won't know anyways, but I figured I'd give all of you an update. Okay. Flareon. Let's talk about this thing. Um, for base stats, it, honestly, its base stats are... Uh, its base stats are outstanding for Generation 1. It has 65 HP, 130 attack, 60 defense, 110 special, and 65 speed. I think out of the three evolutions, this is the best stat spread for a solo run. Um, it's far better than Jolteon. It, Jolteon doesn't need the speed. Uh, Vaporeon doesn't need that much HP. Uh, its typing is better, but Flareon definitely wins in terms of stat distribution. Um, of course, uh, for growth rate, it has medium fast. They all do. And then... Um, for move pool, we luckily start with Ember, so we have a solution for Brock. We also get Tackle, Quick Attack, Tail Whip, nice synergy there. Uh, quick Attack's nice because ta uh, Tackle is pretty bad. 
through level up doesn't really get that many good moves with the exception of like maybe bite but that's not actually going to be useful you'll see why and then flamethrower uh level 52 at least it learns flamethrower because some fire types don't through TM and HM, it gets Body Slam, Takedown, Double Edge, Hyper Beam. So all four of the normal type moves of these, Body Slam is the best, has a secondary effect, and no recoil. Also 100% accuracy. Mimic beyond that, uh, beyond that, Mimic, Reflect, Bide, Fire Blast, Swift, Skull Bash, which doesn't boost defense in Generation 1, and Rest, of course. Substitute and Hyper Beam are not going to be viable today because you have to buy too many coins to purchase them. It just wastes like five to seven minutes of time. And when we are shooting to re-rank Flareon from the B tier into the A tier, we will not have time to purchase those things. If your Pokemon is like going to do like an hour and 20 minute time and Hyper Beam is going to make it more consistent, I think it's maybe more worth it in those situations. But uh, in the situation... Of Flareon, it's not going to be worth it. It wasn't worth it with Moltres. It bled too much time in the, that run. So uh, for Flareon, it's also not going to be worth it. That said, my goal today, I would, you know, it would be a dream to get this thing under 45 minutes, but I don't think that's going to be possible today unless I really, really grind runs on this thing. And uh, I'm realizing more and more that my format is, I'm going to play the game with every Pokemon and trying to get and try to get good results with every Pokemon. But the I am playing the game with every Pokemon comes first before I'm going to get the perfect result with each individual Pokemon. Because if I was trying to get the perfect result with each individual Pokemon, then I would just do like a thousand runs with Flareon and, and set a record. Uh, but I can't do that if I want to finish my tier list in like less than three decades. Maybe eventually... I'll try and get the best possible times with every Pokemon or do tool assisted runs for, for, all, for all of them. But that's not what I'm doing right now. So hopefully today we can get it under, um, I would like to get it under 50 minutes. If we can get it into the A tier, that'd be great. And at some point in the future, maybe further into the year when we max out the S and the A tier, we will, uh, we will have to redistribute all these results to push things closer to a bell curve. I just haven't done that yet because I like the time ranges that I have right now. So, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, can Fire Spin be useful to cheese past a few tough fights? You don't get it before Misty, which is unfortunate. And I think there's a better solution for Lance because Body Slam is going to be my answer for the Gyarados. Um, my mistakes I made, I should, I guess, address this. Mistakes in the previous playthrough, I only did two playthroughs previously with Flareon. I think that my former approach to the game was shooting for a, a little bit too much, a little bit too much consistency and not enough, like, optimization for optimal time results. So you'll have noticed in the last little while my videos have been getting, my strategies have been getting a little bit more risky, but it's it's not necessarily risk, it's more so trying to balance getting the best possible time with over grinding just for like, essentially the flex of like, my run is perfectly consistent, which is just a flex, it doesn't really matter if you get like five resets, but get a great time. Okay. So, Larion, this is the first playthrough back. I did not review my former attempt, so we're just kind of going in blind and seeing how I can do with it this year. Hopefully better than before. Oh, sorry, I did not. Oh gosh, we got a tech problem. I was set up for a platinum. My hotkeys are all wrong. Oh no. Why is that not working? Okay, well. Alright, here we go. 
Is Double Edge going to be useful? I don't think so. Double Edge is like... The problem with Double Edge is usually you're using it against Pokemon you're scared of. <laughs> and then when you're using it against Pokemon you're scared of, you lose health and then they damage you for more. And with Double Edge you don't have the benefit of Body Slam's Paralysis. No bonk counter. There will be other upgrades to the stream today though, so. All right, here we go. Hmm. There was a bunch of software stuff that had to, I, I'm like, my software right now on my computer is configured in a like a very messy way. And, uh, you might be just like, just clean it up. Yeah, but like, I'm having to do way too many playthroughs with the Electrode and mag Magneton, so... <laughs> um, yeah. There there hasn't been time currently to get things set up for like the Bonk counter, etc. Okay. Yeah, like double edge might be useful. Maybe in a, I don't know, like, ah, I just don't like the move that much. Like, that's honestly what it is. We are going to go into this and see uh, what level I can take Brock on at. That's an unfortunate amount of damage. Yeah, I really didn't want to knock it out. Okay. I'm going to fight this guy. Because he has good experience skills and three Pokemon, so it's decent experience per second, and I have Ember. But I don't want to overtrain here. I don't think I need to outspeed the Onyx to have success. May I might be wrong. It we might reset very quickly here. That'll be okay. Everyone count bonks in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get Sand Attack in the place of Tackle. Tackle's trash. We'll talk about the Pokemon Direct when we have a little bit of downtime. Don't really feel like I have downtime yet. I'm gonna fight this guy. Uh, I might cut this out, um, eventually. Ruder's telling me Quick Attack does more damage, so we'll go for that. Okay, let's fight Brock. Well, I can outspeed the Onyx with Quick Attack, but I don't want to use Quick Attack on it. Well, this is not good. It takes way too many hits to damage that thing. Well, that burn was great. The attack debuff will persist. No! Ah. <sighs> Well, that's silly. Okay, again. Okay, so I've changed my mind. We're going to do some training in Viridian Forest. The damage is just a little too low. I think if we're like level 10, maybe just fight all the bug catchers and then we'll be fine. Like, it's not that much of a time investment because we have a fire move. I was trying to push things a little bit too much there and like, what are we going to do? We're going to save 20 seconds, 30 seconds. It's not really that worth it right now. There's always one guy in chat who's like, but minimum battles, you must do minimum battles. It's like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, I'll talk about the Pokemon Direct now. Um... I'm glad they're not releasing a game this year and they're going to take some time to just get the next game really polished. That makes me excited. It does feel like the last titles were a little bit too rushed. I, I understand why, like, I feel like I understand why, like, it makes sense, obviously, money. But, like, long term, the it, it tends to be the case that I have found that 
Going like, I want the money now, that tends to be the case that you get money now, but you get less of it. Whereas if you go, hey, it's okay, like I'm not gonna eat the marshmallow today, I'll just leave it, and then at some point in the future, there'll be two of them, and that's when I can eat like half of one and leave the other one and a half um, to, to continue to grow. And I feel like um, if you just keep producing a bunch of titles that are kind of sloppily put together and have a bunch of poor optimization like Scarlet and Violet, that people are going to stop buying your games because I, like after Scarlet and Violet, I, I quite literally thought to myself, like, I don't know if I'm going to play the next Pokemon game on release or the first time since X and Y. Like, I was like, I, I don't know, like, if they release another one this year, like, I'm probably not going to play it. I'm busy with the channel, and if it's going to be, like, glitchy or or poorly put together, maybe I just won't play it for now. I'll play it in the future, later, something like that. Maybe they'll go on sale, or I can buy a used copy. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that they are taking more time with the release, because that makes me more excited to play it, because I think it's going to be a more polished product. If your marshmallow is growing, you shouldn't eat it, yeah. Good, good tip. That's why I always buy the Poke Doll first, so that, or Poke Ball first, so it's always in the, uh, the top slot and I can easily spam A through it, which is, gives a really quick, really quick capture. Well, this fight's a lot easier at level 9 and 10. That's for sure. Uh, that looks like a 4 hit at level 10. It's better than 5 like last time. Also, I'm, I'm speed tied with this thing. I'm going to sand attack it once just because I'm paranoid. Oh, God. Well. <laughs> no! Are you kidding me? Three turn bide. Okay, fine. I risked that one, but I risked that I did not win the speed. I was like, I'm not going to win the speed tie. And even if I do win the speed tie, it's probably not going to get a three turn bide. But it got a three turn bide. Or, or I got, I won the speed tie. Ugh. Frustrating. Oops, I forgot the replay. We need replays. Replay files are important. Then I can release this as a video later if I decide this run is great. Poor Flareon. It's not having a great start. Apologies, I gotta move my mic and stuff right now. I'm sitting in kind of an awkward position. It's gonna kill my back if I keep playing like this. And I have like 20 seconds right there when he's giving me, or when he's giving me all his speeches and walking me around. So um, I added a bunch of new stuff on the right hand side of the screen that you'll notice during trainer battles. There are now labels for all of the stats, and then the stage modifiers show up like they show up on my Pokemon. So there's a little bit more visual, like, synchronization or congruence. And then I also added crit rate for the enemy Pokemon, their moves typings, their moves effective powers, and the Pokemon's typings. Just to give a little bit more information, like I'm providing in, uh, in Generation 4. Pokeball first. Also, potions second always, because then then they are second in the inventory, and when you want to get one, you can just spam A through the inventory and heal your Pokemon quickly. Nah, I don't know if I want to do blackout training with Flareon. I don't know if it's worth it. 
Because at a really low level, it's not quite consistent enough. I don't think knocking out his team, it takes three hits on both of them, it seems like, and I'm not outspeeding the Diglett, and it likes to crit. Like, it's going to be really sad if I lose to the, uh, the Diglett. So I'd rather, like, fight the trainers here, and, like, just fighting two of them, which are all one hits, um, gives a really good amount of experience. So, like, first we want to fight the trainers in Viridian Forest, then if that's not enough, we consider Blackout Training. Please catch it. Okay, good. I think that one had a small chance to escape. I could fight the Nidoran last. Yes, I, I don't want to. I, I think I'm fine. I, I think, like, last time I just got unlucky. Uh, I could fight the rival, but the rival is risky. You have to backtrack for him. It, it'll waste too much time, I think, at this point. Because he has a Spiro that's level 9, so you can't fight him right after the uh, lab battle. If you could fight him after the lab battle, like a Pokemon like Weezing or Muck, then it makes more sense, but it doesn't make as much sense with Flareon. Like, I'm probably going to lose if I do that fight. Like, this is... I think this is just good enough. I speed tie the Onyx, so... And, like, I can burn, which is an advantage, because then I cut their attack stat. I'm just not going to go for the sand attack this time and instead attack in... Okay, well, now I'm going to go for the sand attack. Okay, we got him. Kind of sketchy still. I wish I could have one more speed. Like, level 12 is probably perfect at 24 speed. Maybe I do fight the Nidoran last. Like, I don't know if that gets me what I need, though. Like, if I have to fight Nidoran last and then a bunch of wild encounters, it's it's going to really not be worth it. I'm sure what I did in the previous video was level 12 or level 13 for consistency. But that's probably too safe. Again, like, we're trying to get less and less safe here rather than trying to, um, to get more and more safe. The goal is, like, how do we shave time off to get Flareon's run? Uh... Clocking in with a better time. Yeah, blackout training could help with the speed stat experience, but it's unlikely that uh, like two or three diglets will give me enough to gain one more stat point, I don't think. Yeah, the, exactly. And it wastes, like, what, two, three minutes? If I do it on level 10 and I lose, like, it's fine. It, it's not even worth saving, obviously. I hope that was obvious. Like, it's obvious that we don't need to save. Um, I don't know if I want to fight anyone here, but I think I do because Misty is technically next, and I don't really want to fight her being underleveled. So we're going to fight, like, a few trainers that'll give us uh, good experience yields for lowish time in battle. Kyle, yo, Scott, new viewer here, found your channel a month ago. I work 12-hour days in a heavy machinery cab and have been binge-watching your videos to get me through the slow days. Oh, well, I'm glad I can get you through the slow days. 12-hour shifts sounds, that sounds like a lot of work, man. Why don't you stream this on Twitch? Uh, so, like, to be completely transparent, Twitch would pay me every month if I was streaming weekly on Twitch. Uh, Twitch would pay me every month the amount that I make in one live stream on YouTube. So, uh, I just didn't feel like it was worth it. And, like, I, I talk, I, like, have talked uh, about with p different people about, like, potentially setting up, uh, like, dual streaming so that I'm streaming on both platforms at the same time because, like, that does make sense. But, Right now, uh, so much stuff has been going wrong behind the scenes that I don't want added complexity, so I've just decided that it's going to all be on YouTube, at least for the foreseeable future, and then maybe in the future I'll diversify a little bit when I feel like things are a bit more under control. But right now everything feels panicky. So we're just doing just doing what is required to keep things, uh, keep things going and, and make my brain not explode. Honestly, the answer sometimes to like, why didn't you do X thing is like my brain would explode if I if I added more things. So I just can't do all of the things, unfortunately.
it's it, I think it's hard to have the perspective watching content just how much goes into the process of creating the content. There are so many things I am constantly managing and it is yeah, it's it's overwhelming. Like for tier lists for example, I have like what eight or nine different tier lists, I think. It's like because there's like three for generation three now, and then there's the platinum one, and then there's generation one, and then there's like technically a red tier list. This is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. Oh my gosh. Come on. I don't think dual, st dual stream can mess with the overlay. Gosh. Terrible luck. Absolutely terrible luck. Wow. <sighs> and like what I've, uh, I've noticed, like a lot of people have reached out to me to help out with the channel. And I really appreciate that. That is incredible to feel. It, it feels like everyone wants to support this project and, and that's really exciting to me. The issue is, is that I've, I've noticed like even getting people to help, then I become a manager for like all the small projects that are being worked on like individually by like eight different volunteers. And then I am like spending six hours sending people messages about all the small volunteer projects and like constantly juggling all of that stuff in my brain. And it's like, I don't know if this, like, like at some point this is going to cause so much administrative bloat that I, I, I'm being actually less efficient by having people help. Yeah, Gen 1 sound attack's good. And like the thing I, I think like the management thing that I struggle with most is like, up until this point in my life, I played an instrument that was very like independent and then I played, um, like, um, uh, I was a, like a composer writing music, but like I would write music and I would do whatever I wanted with my music. Like it wasn't like someone was telling me like it needs to be exactly this way. Um, Ember is effective power 60 because it gets the same type of attack bonus. Base power 40. My overlay displays effective power. And like I would love, like hiring someone to do like management stuff for the channel would be amazing, but I need to like have the perfect person. Like, I have to know that if I say like, hey, this project needs to get done and it needs to be done in this way to solve these problems, that it will do exactly that. And like, that's the, the tricky thing is like, finding someone that approaches the world with the same way that my brain approaches the world. That's essentially like the biggest challenge with this. Cause it's not like, there's not like a generic like business, like, oh, just like learn the accounting software and then put our numbers in. Like, oh, like that's fairly straightforward and like it's cookie cutter. There's not a lot of like uh, unique scenarios. But when it comes to like, I don't know, styling a tier list and making sure that the style of the tier list is congruent between all my videos and that it's like stylistically co coherent with everything else that I do on the channel. Then at that point, it's like that person needs to see the world and design and art the same way that I see design and art. Otherwise, every time I look at the stuff that this person helps other people produce or that they produce themselves, it's like I'm always going to be critiquing it through my lens and then requiring like tons of changes. And then I still am always pushed back into that position of like, okay, now I'm still managing all the little projects because the details are not lining up correctly for me. Uh, I'm going south. Yes, none of the evolutions get dig, which is like, yeah, you'll never get that. Yeah, I know. Like, seriously, I don't think I will get it either. The the close, oh gosh, first Pidgey gets me with sand attack. Um, by the way, using a physical move here can be more advantageous because the sand attacks that they throw at you will badge boost you, so you'll deal more damage per hit. The closest thing I can think of is like, I heard an interview with Mr. Beast. I don't watch his content, but I saw an interview of him uh, talking about it. And he was just like, I basically got someone to just follow me around and they just watched me like every day, all day so that they could like 
see how I do things and how I want things to be, and then eventually they were just able to like make the same choices that I would make. Like, yeah, that seems like the best way to do it. I don't know if I'm gonna need rest, but I think I will. Yeah, so a Scott clone who also does exactly. We need to clone Scott, but then but but then also like remove the part of my brain that gets frustrated by the management tasks. Make me like like management, also I'm gonna lose here. <laughs> this guy sometimes. Other, other times I just crit and knock the tentacle out in one hit. Yeah, we need business, Scott. Exactly. Alright, let's get... So next time, maybe get body slam first. I'm gonna forget it if I get body slam first. That's why I didn't do it. Because I always do it in this order. I'm so used to it. It's so easy to forget if you do things in a different order. Especially when you have this much muscle memory. Like, it's... It's not hard to forget something when you have no muscle memory and you're like reading a plan or something, but when you have a ton of muscle memory, it just like sometimes you think about the wrong thing for one moment and then it's like, actually, you're going over here now. <laughs> and now the SSN just sailed away and that's the moment that your brain's like, oh, rest. All right, body slam. Body slam's really good. Uh, we should be fine from here. Anyways, uh, regarding like that whole thing, it's like I don't have an expectation that that's what I'm gonna get. Um, it, it's just like I'm trying to articulate what my needs are and like where the frustration stems from. And I guess there is there is like a certain amount of perspective of like, does someone else helping even if they don't do it exactly how I want, does it make things 45% easier or does it make them 25% easier? And is is that worth it? And in some cases, the answer is yes. <laughs> Imagine developing cloning just to play Pokemon Stellar Runs. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the bike budget. It's fine. Uh, I'm actually fighting Misty now, anyways. Don't know why I went down there. See, that was a that was a muscle memory thing. Yeah, like, like getting, letting go of production, pet peeves, and nip clicks. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, Starmie. Well, crit right away and then got paralyzed. Okay, not, not a problem. Yeah, the SSN is so slow. Why is it so slow? It's painful watching it sail away. I've thought about training my own AI model, yeah. Actually, for a bunch of different things. It's a, another thing where it's like, I just don't have time to think about that task and like everything that goes into it. There's also, okay, here's another thing. Um, we're going to fight Surge and I'll, I'll talk about this right after I beat him because he's probably not going to be difficult. Yeah, he's a <laughs> What was this? This was the least confident surge we've ever seen. He didn't actually do anything. Oh my gosh. Also, we're still getting a good time, even though, uh, even though we got delayed a lot. Oh. Did both the mistakes. Okay, let me talk about the thing I was going to say. So, there's another thing about, like, scaling production, which is... There is, I, I feel... And I have not done a good job of this. I feel there is a great wisdom to know when scaling production is the right choice and when scaling production is not the right choice. So, for example, if your channel has like, I don't know, when my channel had like a thousand subscribers, 
Does it make sense to like aggressively scale production and hire a video editor? Like absolutely not. <laughs> Like I should be doing everything for the channel myself. Like if I wanna do marketing, if I wanna do whatever, whatever the tasks are for the channel, I should be doing them my myself. I think that there's a little bit of a nebulous area that I have been in recently. Like I was very lucky to get um, huge support from Patreon and stuff like that. I really appreciate everyone who, who supports me. Um, and videos are doing decent views every time I put them out. It's very stable, it's regular, and then I'm at this place where it's like, oh, like, it seems like here could be the moment where, where scaling makes sense, and like, more people helping will just make more content, better content, faster, like. But I think that what I've been learning is that that, that answer is not always so clear-cut. It doesn't always, it's not always that it makes sense to scale right away. And there's some wisdom to just being like, actually we can, but we're not going to right now. Like we can get bigger, we can um, outsource this stuff or um, like make life easier by hiring a like a script uh, editor, for example. I, I did that. I played around with the idea of getting other people to help me write my scripts. So like they would sit and watch me play while I was playing. I would say things like, take this note, take this note. And then the idea was that they would put together a script with all the notes that we had collected during the playthrough. And what I kept finding was like, every time I got the script back, I'm like, this doesn't feel like I would say it. Like, I'm just gonna go through and have to re-edit the entire thing anyways, not because it's badly written, but because it's not what I would say. And the most important thing for me is that my videos sound like, that, like they, I want them to feel like authentic to like, me and my experience playing these games and uh, my joy for the games. And I don't know if I can get that across when my voice is constantly monotone, but I definitely know that I can't get it across when uh, someone else is, is writing it for me. So then I decided to not go ahead with that style of like production optimization moving forward. Um, so then like, like, but a video editor has, has really helped. Like Sean has been a major, and that was the one thing I really didn't want to give up because I was really enjoying the process of video editing every week. And I was just like, I don't know if I can give this up. Um, and I, I didn't give it up. Uh, Sean just does the majority of the stuff. And then I sit down with the video after he has done all the stuff that we've talked about. And then I add a bunch of stuff myself and do like the finishing touches or add a bunch of comments being like, hey, like, let's let's remove this thing or uh, let's add this thing here. Like, can we add this? Can we change this graphic? So that's been, I think, satisfying. For me, at least. I'm not going to get double edge in this playthrough. If we need it for the next playthrough, I'll, I'll pick it up. I don't want to waste time on it at the current moment. I will not need bide today, but soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. No, I don't think about it. All right, let's keep playing. Ugh. We will need Mimic, I'm sure. Yeah, so like another thing is like scaling like like are you like are you as an individual ready to scale? I remember I watched another YouTuber, another creator talking about that, talking about like he had kind of realized that he could, t he had like millions of subscribers, but he could take his business, I think it was like to like a, like a $10 million business a year or something if he hired on a bunch more people. And then he just kind of like, was like, no, I'm actually like satisfied with like the level that I have right now. I, I don't need to actually push this scale bigger. Like this is about the size I'm comfortable with right now. So like knowing that personally and having a, a sense for that is, I think, uh, there's great wisdom in that, and I definitely didn't have it over the last couple of years. Uh, I guess we can learn Vite. Like, sure, Sanitize kind of trash in this portion of the game. I was a 48% chance to knock that out. We got lucky. Uh, doesn't matter if you use Body Slam or Ember on the Sand Slide, a uh, Sand Shrew, it's gonna knock it out. Both are guarantees.
Oh, also, I, I should just state, I feel incredibly lucky and privileged to even be considering this question. Like... This is a good problem to have. Bite is not a dark type move, so it can't use it against the ghosts. Could potentially lose here because of that. I don't want the HP up. Waste time. Everyone always asks me, why don't you do X? Um, so I try and mention all the stuff, but yeah. People forget how scary it is when people's salary depends on how well the content you produce performs. Well, like I said, I, I feel incredibly grateful because my videos, they, they like get pretty consistent views. My worst performing video is like, like 20% lower than maybe the average and then best performing videos like dramatically outperform the average so um and i kind of have a sense for like which videos will do better and which ones will do worse like less people are going to watch emerald and platinum and more people are going to watch yellow strangely a decent number of people watch crystal even though it's probably the least least interesting game to play from a solo running perspective but i still think it's interesting i, th I just think it's the least in comparison with all the others Why don't you do X when querying a professional is in short? Because it's worse than what I do. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's like, because I did, or the actual answer is also like, I used to do X and it's worse, so I stopped doing X. There are so many things like that in these runs where I'm just like, um... Yeah, it's just like, I used to do all these things, like fighting all the trainers at, right at the gate there. I'm sure I would have, like, a year ago come out of there and just immediately fought everyone. Like, terrible idea. Just a bad idea. Don't do it. Do it like this. Fight the people that give really good experience yields. Skip everyone else. Because, like, this guy alone is going to give me the same experience that, like, two of the bad trainers would give me. And if I had fought everyone up there and then uh, achieved the goal level, maybe then I would have moved on to the next area and skipped this guy... And in so doing, I would have completely crippled the run for Flareon. Like, I would have made it just uh, so much slower. Ah, uh, not fine. <laughs> I, I do want to continue training here, so. Uh, the question was asked, why do Emerald and Platinum perform worse? I think because the majority of my audience uh, is around the same age that I am. I'm 31. And... Uh, if everyone's around the same age that I am, then most people grew up playing Gen 1 and 2. So the majority of my viewership then is aligned strongly with those games. So there will be some people who started playing in Gen 3, that kind of thing, but those people are, are generally... Uh, there are less of them. I'm going to be using Body Slam a lot, so I'm just going to increase its PP. Plus then I can uh, use it here. No. <laughs> Just barely not knocking out the coughing. Fine. Ah, uh, poison. By the way, poison does one-sixth damage every turn, so it's, like, really bad. So we don't have to worry about it. I did not fight Erica yet. In the future, I could fight Erica before uh, Department Store. I don't like that rooting. I think it's slower than fighting Erica after uh, Safari. I think post-Safari Erica is the fastest way to play the mid-game. Because if you fight Erica pre-department, you have to walk back to her gym. Or uh, walk back from her gym, which takes time. Also, this is way better. Cut those trees. Don't cut the other tree that I used to cut. It's a terrible idea. Don't do it. Don't do it. Cut this tree. Austin and I and Smash Math figured that out a little while ago when we were doing the uh, Clefable event for supporters. And thank you, Smash Math, for taking that route. Because No! 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 <laughs> That's hilarious. I misclicked on A, and uh, it, it caught caught the knit around. I can't believe that. Yeah, one sixteenth damage from from poison. Pretty bad. It's okay. The knit around can just hang out there. He's not harming anyone.
How much time did that waste? I don't know, maybe 10 seconds. 10 seconds in like the worst case scenario. This trainer is way better than anyone else in the gym. Also, she's significantly better in Fire Red, by the way. She has five Pokemon in Fire Red, plus she has these three still. So if you think fighting her is good in this instance, fighting her in Fire Red is also good. I got Fire Spin just in case. He should get the same treatment as Kyle. We can check if he's shiny. There's a specific way. I think it's all the DVs have to be 10 or something like that. HP is maybe different because 10 is even. So HP is zero maybe. Uh... I also like the viewership decrease from like the Gen 1 games to like the Gen 4 games and that kind of thing. It's not so significant that it doesn't make sense to make Gen 4 content. So I'm not just going to like continue producing only Generation 1 content. I think it's it's more fun for me too learning new games. I'm really enjoying playing Platinum. Um, I thought that Platinum out of the first games in the series like the first four generations. I thought Platinum was going to be my least favorite to play, but I don't know. I Honestly, like, Joanna, I think that my favorite game right now to play is Platinum. Like, it's really fun. Uh, it's slow, like, it's slow-paced, which I think has an advantage because, like, streaming Gen 1 is hectic. It's stressful. This game is so fast. Like, you make one small mistake, you catch yourself a second Nidoran, or you catch yourself a Nidoran, not a second one. But like, or like, ah, the other day, may have taught my Electrode Explosion. Uh, because spamming A a little bit too fast in a battle, boom, explosion in your first move slot in the place of Thunderbolt. That feels bad. <laughs> This person is so good to fight. Always fight this person. Five Pokemon. Five Pokemon. But a little bit out of the way. For the longest time, I didn't even know this scientist existed. Because I never went over here. Also, this person is really good to fight. Therefore, four. You fight the scientists in, in, in order. Five Pokemon, four Pokemon, then three Pokemon. Yeah, I caught a shiny in the Heatran video. My third one so far. First one was Rattata, but I did not catch it because I had no Pokeballs. Second one was... Um, second one was uh, the shiny Poochiana, which was named Kyle after one of my... Kyle Ferguson, I believe. Uh, Patreon. At the time. And uh, may still be a Patreon. I do not memorize the list, unfortunately. That would truly explode my brain. There's like 700 people now. Um, yeah, so... Then I got the shiny Machop, which has no guard, by the way, which is a great ability. Basically removes accuracy, meaning Cross Chop has 100% accuracy. Cross Chop's good. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, that's gonna be fun. And, uh, yeah, Shiny Machop, so that's the last one. Also, the Shiny Machop has 29 in its attack IV, but 0 in its special defense and 6 in its speed, so generally not, not good. Or 7 in its speed? 6 or 7. But, yeah. So we're just fighting, we're fighting all the people right now that give good experience to level up a little bit in the mid-game, not to, uh, we don't want to cheap out here. Dynamic Punch? Oh yeah, I guess you could utilize Dynamic Punch too. That's a smart thing. Also, uh, Machamp in Gen 4 are real good because the punches are physical and it gets all of them. No Guard Dynamic Punch. Yeah, yeah, No Guard Dynamic Punch seems like good. Yeah. I hate this Pokemon. <laughs> this Pokemon! 
That is my least favorite Pokemon, NPC Pokemon, in all of the generations. Like, fighting the Sans, I don't care about this, I'm gonna lose to the Cloister's Clamp, whatever. Cloister Clamp, it's annoying. But the Sand Slash is truly infuriating. I think for the Cloister, I might try and luck the Fire Spin and then one hit with uh, Ember. That might be like how you get by it. Because Ember just isn't... Uh, see, Fire Spin... Fire Spin leaves a lot to be desired when it doesn't hit. Okay, well, when it works, it works. It's It feels great, but when it doesn't work, it just feels like the worst thing in the world. Oh, gosh. Come on. It's going to get me. I filmed the first playthrough with Sand Slash. Okay. Again. Cool. So this fight's annoying. Uh, we're probably gonna... In the follow-up, what we'll probably do is we'll use seven rare candies right before this fight and be like level 49 or something, where it's just ridiculous and we don't have to... We don't have to worry. He almost threw twice. He almost threw. Yeah, yeah. That's me all the time. Don't worry, I throw all the time. Do my best. Yeah, it's much easier without confusion, yeah. Yeah, if, they, if I hadn't been confused, it would have been fine in the second fight. I'm just gonna Ember the Rhyhorn because it doesn't matter if I knock it out slowly. Okay, well, crit, nice. Ooh. Body time did a lot to me, but I'm okay. Does Machop line gets Fissure? I don't know. Uh, I don't want to do this yet. I think we Koga next. Yes, guard. Ah. I think we have almost trained enough to just win in the remainder of the battles. I'm going to fight this guy because he has really good yields. He does have the sand slash. So you have to be careful, but uh, I could teach Flareon Swift, but I didn't want to go out of my way to get it. That is why I did not do that. Because like if you walk out of your way to get it and it takes 10 seconds of walk time, and then it takes mm, 2 seconds of dialogue time, and it takes 6 seconds of teaching time. That's like 20 seconds. That's significant when you're trying to get under... Um, Okay. Sorry, I changed my mind here. So if we fight this, we level up, and then we candy, we can get flamethrower. You see? Candying for flamethrower might be the play, because it's at 52, right? So we have enough now to get Leer, I guess. There we that's great. Thanks, Flareon and Game Freak. But now we get flamethrower. This is gonna toast Koga's bugs. All right, let's do it. Let's burn them all down to the ground. I have one hit on everything, by the way, including the Venomoth. Uh, it's psychic. Even if it crits, will not one hit me. It's best range, best possibility. There is a 1.9% chance to four hit. All right. Get this candy. Now we'll go back to Owl Town and go surfing. I'm gonna skip the uh, the Fisher today. I don't think I need to fight him, but we can fight him in the future if we need more levels. Uh, I think I may have over leveled in this playthrough, so I, it would be nice if I over leveled because then we can just cut stuff for the next run rather than having to figure out what is the best thing to add in. 
in general, adding stuff in is... So this was a thing that... This was something that was always told to me in music. Like, say you're playing a piece of music. If, like, you're playing it in the most ridiculously uh, exaggerated way, it's always easier to, like, tone it down a little bit than add more exaggeration in. Because if someone's mind is just, like, holding them back from being really exaggerated, then... Um, it's hard to, like, unlock that. I feel similar with these solo runs. Like, it's easier to take stuff out than it is to add stuff in. Which is why a lot of my first playthroughs end up being quite conservative, where I just, like, battle everyone and then go into battles at really high levels. I'm trying to, like, compensate for that a little bit by removing stuff and being a little bit more optimal and streamlined, but... Yeah. Prize, you only have... No, Flareon's great. I'm actually, I think that I should have less resets right now. Also, this is going to be a bad fight. Confusion again getting me. We could, now that we got badge boosted, we could play the fire spin game, but I don't really want to play the fire spin game. Hey, hey, hey. no! I thought I was going to survive that, but then it crit. Yeah, we had like the Tentacool Supersonic early on, which was bad. What, what else happened? There were like some other, uh, I forget them all. Oh, gosh. Well, that was bad. Blaine is a Blaine is a serious nightmare in, in yellow version. I will have everyone know. Maybe we rest. For, I don't know, like teach rest for this fight. Is that like, a, does that make sense? Uh, growl from this thing is bad news. I don't want to use flamethrower, but I might have to. It does more damage now. Obviously not if I crit with body slam, but yeah. We could just spam sand attack against him if we kept that on the set. Yeah. But I don't know if that's the solution. That that always feels a little bit off. So I have 119 speed, which is one more than Sabrina's Kadabra, which I'm not going to outspeed the Alakazam no matter what I do. Flareon's just too slow, but yeah. Rest for Blaine is a good idea, though, because his elemental damage is not very effective. And you can badge boost yourself getting others getting hit by other things. 64% chance to one hit the Alakazam because my oh, okay, well I got badge boosted, so that would have pushed it over the edge. Is there any point in teaching bite? No, there isn't. Not great pathing there. All right, Flareon, make me proud. <sighs> no healing items? All right, fine. We'll use all the rest of the rare candies. Teach Mimic. In the place of Quick Attack in this case. I, so the Carbos that I skipped, I probably should go Carbos because I'm a little bit slow in this case. Slower than the Doug Trio, which is not where I want to be. That's frustrating. And it crit, okay. Yeah, Swift does. Oh, Swift does feel like it's going to be a priority move. Speed is a problem here. I should buy Carbos in the department store. Like three Carbos fixes this problem, and then we don't have the issue. <laughs> By the way, Earthquake does not hit Pokemon that are underground in Generation One. That is very key to note. Um, what am I going to do more damage to the ride on with? Flamethrower or Earthquake? Probably Earthquake. Still gonna live. Ha! <laughs> okay, so I win because of the guard spec. Doesn't feel great, but like, alright. As a fire type, being able to utilize Earthquake against uh, Giovanni is excellent. 
Normally, fire types, electric types, and poison types have to rely on mimic and double team as a combo in that case, which is not the most reliable combo. It doesn't feel great to use, because you can always just set it up and then the Rhydon just hits you with Earthquake and you lose. But with Flareon, uh, with high attack, we're actually okay. Flamethrower is really good against the first half of his team. Now, Magneton is not a steel type yet, but... Oh. Oh. Terra Fusion. Perfect. Just what I needed. Uh, I think we're going to do a little bit of Victory Road training, but not too much. Um, maybe, I don't know. I'm so close to leveling up. Do I fight just like one wild Pokemon and then go from there? Or do I try and fight more and get one more level? Like, do I go to level 60 or 61? Oh, no. I'm gonna get rid of the status. Making good time. I, I'm gonna do the extra training. We'll take trainers out if I uh, if I mess up and we're too low leveled or we're or sorry, we're too high leveled. I'm I'm starting to think we're not too high leveled though. Uh, I'm getting worried about Lance's uh, Lance's Gyarados. What my damage range is gonna be against it. I need to be able. I'm pretty sure I need to be able to three hit. If I can't three hit, this runs like basically over. But the, only, the 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 win condition there is paralysis, which is why I've kept this move specifically instead of upgrading to double edge. I could always trap with fire spin. That's another thing about Flareon that I think is interesting. It, it doesn't have a lot of moves, so like you're basically just like yeah, body slam and flamethrower. Then the other two slots don't really matter until I get mimic. And then even in that case, like, having Fire Spin hang around for a little bit longer, like, it could be Rest, it could be Reflect. Um, Reflect might be a, a good choice for Blaine, honestly. Uh, I, I do find that Reflect, when you resist his Fire-type moves, is, is fantastic there. Okay. This should level me up. Yep. It's gonna... Yeah, I I'm thinking like 60 or 63 as well for Lance. That's, that's what I was thinking. We might, uh... We might set a really good time. This could be... Even right now, we're, we're like on track to... Kind of crush my previous time. Oh, we should be good now. Let's go. Do we mimic... Like, in this case, rest makes a lot of sense if we're mimicking... Um, amnesia. Just have to hope the Slowbro doesn't turn one Surf. Surf, okay. Well, that's not great. But withdraw a second turn. It has to withdraw a second turn, which gives me time to set up more. And then with good special, 810 special to be exact, I'm going to sweep his final, or Lorelei's final two Pokemon. Alright, no problems there. Next room. Don't get too confident in here. Especially if you have an electric type. Uh, that won't be relevant soon. Okay, so I think we just sweep now. Right? Pretty sure. Hi! <laughs> I birthed the champ, yes. <laughs> Amazing. Oh gosh, 
Do you see that? I was trying to, um, like, go down in my inventory, but I moved my character down two steps. Alright. The safest choice here is always setting up substitute. It just stay. Oh. That's not a safe choice, by the way. Do not body slam the Gengar, despite what the intro cinematic tells you in red and blue. Well, it's nice that she switched out, because then she doesn't get her substitute for the Gengar. I could trap here with Fire Spin, but I think it's more reliable to just attack with Flamethrower. After all, I could burn, and even if I get hit by Hypnosis or something like that, it's not the end of the world. Oh, slightly slower than that Gengar. That Gengar has 146 speed, and I have 142. So another uh, piece of information there convincing me that likely uh likely utilizing uh what are they called is the better idea carbos okay blaine uh lance this is the this is the most terrifying of them all body slam what are we gonna do hey we're gonna two hit 82 percent chance to two hit at level 63 flareon is a beast yes okay i'm gonna hit by bubble beam here uh we just hope it doesn't lower speed because I need to outspeed the uh, the Dragonite. Because this thing's going to move first. And then we survive the Swift. Yes, 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 yes! First attempt, Lance! Nice! Oh my gosh, can I get under 50 minutes? First attempt? My excitement! It's coursing through my body. I'm going to mess up. Don't mess up. Focus, focus, focus. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Come on. Flamethrower, please, 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 please. Guaranteed one hit. Okay, 91% chance on the Alakazam. Oh, it's going to move first and Kinesis me. Well, do I keep trying? <laughs> I'm going to keep trying just because our time, our time is good. And if we, if we can win, it'll be fantastic. I just hope I don't miss on the, on the cloister. No. Okay, well, I'm going to heal here. Let's heal. Hopefully a Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave. No, Screech. Okay. Can we get a Thunder Wave? No, no, stop critting me. Please stop critting me. Please. Please stop critting me. Stop. Oh, gosh. Okay, come on. No. Oh, gosh. Do we just tank an Earthquake and then uh, steal Earthquake so that this thing's not a problem? Like, it's all... Oh, gosh. Okay, I, lo I lost my speed, so I'm dead now. And we're not going to get the... Unless this misses Clamp... <sighs> okay, so if we didn't get, um, I'm just going to tank the Earthquake and see how much it does. That is too much damage. <laughs> that is way too much damage for that to be a good play. Also, I got hit by Kinesis again. Granted, the Executor is bad. Please. Please. Thank you. Painfully close. This is painfully close. I don't care. Oh, I do care, actually. No! I hate you, Kinesis. I hate you so much. Is there any way we can outspeed this Alakazam? I don't think so. What? Gen 1 miss? Oh, you you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Executor. Executor. Is awful. <laughs> Ah, uh, So in second runs, it usually is the case if you get hit by the Kinesis, you just reset because um, it's so hard to come back if you have your accuracy lowered. There's so many points where stuff can just instantly go wrong. Yeah, this is going to go right. I only have a 26% chance to knock the Executor out on one hit, by the way, which is hilarious. Just don't Thunder Wave. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, well, that's bad. 
Oh, oh that's really bad. Okay, whew. Um, this is the safe play, I think. I might crit. All right, 51, 51. 12 resets, level 65. To be fair, I think we had quite bad luck throughout this playthrough. This seems like it's more on the side of, like, uh, the bad luck side of the, like... Like, at some point, there's going to be bad things that happen in your playthrough. If you think nothing bad is going to happen in your playthrough, then you don't know how statistics work. So, like, bad stuff is going to happen, but... I think this, in this case, more bad stuff happened than should be the kind of, like, uh, average distribution. Three hours and two minutes game time. Let's compare this, though. The, here, here's the thing, though. Uh, despite being a terrible playthrough, what I think we would call a terrible playthrough right now, uh, we're, I think we're beating Flareon's former time already. No, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't beat Flareon's time. We got very close, though. Uh, Flareon's former time was 50 minutes and 55 seconds. So, still not a personal best with this one. Not quite. But, we're really close, and there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I think we can just immediately see that we can do better. Okay, let's, uh, let's go through this route a little bit and talk it, talk it out. Uh, interestingly enough, of the three evolutions that I have played so far, I feel the most hopeful about Flareon. Okay. Uh, first of all, we have to look at Lance, because my range on the Gyarados was actually kind of ridiculous, level 63. I have... I also didn't use my last rare candy for the champion. I am realizing that now. Yeah, there's just one rare candy sitting there. So, like, I could have used it and gone to 64. Five for this fight. Uh, we'll we'll see if that changes our speed. We're still gonna obviously underspeed the Alakazam, but what do we get to? We get to 147. We need 156 to move first against Alakazam. I skipped the Safari Carbos. Oh yeah, we need to change this. Uh, I skipped the Safari Carbos. Right? No, I got the Safari Carbos. I skipped a different Carbos. Probably Mansion Carbos. Cinnabar Mansion. No Carbos. So if we get a Carbos in Cinnabar Mansion, then we go from... Uh, we go from zero Carbos, or one Carbos, two Carbos, to seven Carbos. Yeah, two Carbos to seven Carbos. We still underspeed the Alakazam. 153 speed. Oh gosh, that's frustrating. That's so close. That's so close. This battle is so simple if we outspeed the Alakazam. Like, imagine how easy this battle is against the champion if we outspeed Alakazam. We literally, like, one hit the Sandslash, one hit the Alakazam, probably one hit the Executor because we're getting better damage ranges if we're going to be a higher level. Okay, level 67 outspeeds Alakazam. We have a 57% chance to knock out the Executor on one hit. So, we improve a lot by going up in levels there. Flareon outspeeds Magneton. Two hits that. Oh, it only two hits the Cloister. That's annoying. We need Fire Blast. I guess if we don't... We don't really need Rest... We don't need Mimic either if we're not stealing something from the Sandslash. Although we could steal... Well... This is a hilarious set. Let's just... Let's just like a... Here, humor me for a moment. The funniest set of all time. No. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, Flamethrower, Sandslash. Uh, you mimic Earthquake on the Sand Slash, then you just take like 70% damage. Then Flamethrower, knock it out. Earthquake, Alakazam. Then Fire Blast, Executor. Earthquake, Magneton. Fire Blast, Cloister. Earthquake. We don't need Flamethrower. 
all we do. It's slightly more consistent against the Sand Slash. And we don't have to rest anywhere. So we can just, like, we could also get rid of Body Slam and keep rest and put Fire Blast in the place of Body Slam. Body Slam's irrelevant for this fight if we mimic the Earthquake. I think that that's the play. So Fire Blast in the place of Body Slam. Keep rest just in case. Because, like, stuff can go wrong, right? Like, um, or, like, I guess if we keep rest, we can also just heal on the Executor essentially for free because it's not going to do much. Um, and that, that, like, ensures that we might survive the Cloister if Fire Blast misses. I don't think it... 3k is a lot of money. We could go to... We could go to... Um, potentially we could fight Erica first. We have to see what the damage ranges are like against her. So, like, if we go to Erica first, do we get... We'll get more money, maybe buy one more Carbos. The problem is, if we buy one more Carbos, does it ruin our route because we can't use that many Carbos? Sometimes using four Carbos, you'll, you'll ruin the route. Yeah, ineffective vitamin. So buying one more Carbos will not actually help us. So we should not waste time trying to, trying to buy one more Carbos. Yeah, Fire Blast won't help. Yeah, true. Fire Blast won't help unless you outspeed the Alakazam. I'm, I'm specifically talking about the scenario where we do outspeed the Alakazam, obviously. Um, okay. I guess the question is, does outspeeding the Alakazam make sense? Or am I just being like... I think what's probably happening is I'm being a lit Okay, Body Slam is still irrelevant, so teaching Fire Blast in the place of Body Slam does make sense. To improve damage ranges, I, even at level 64, against... Well, we'll have at least one candy. Let's, like, be real. 65. It'll improve damage ranges against the Cloister and the Executor. Rest is there in case the Alakazam gets awful. Like, if it hits a Psychic or something and you want to heal on the Executor, you can, just to take your time uh, to be a little bit more prepared for possible downsides against the Cloister, but I don't think we need to level up more. Like, this seems a good plan. It's a weird plan, Fire Blast and Flamethrower, but I do like it. Because Earthquake fills the niche of knocking the Alakazam out. The question now is, is what level at Lance do we need to get a decent chance? So level 60 Flareon against the Gyarados is only a 27% chance, 28% chance to two hit with Body Slam. I do not like that. Hydro Pump will two hit. It has good AI, it's always gonna use Hydro Pump. So in this case, we are relying on a Paralysis or a Hyper Potion from Lance or a crit. There's like, there's, there's, see, there's lots of play there, but like, I don't know if I want to rely on that. That doesn't seem like, that doesn't seem like what I should be relying on here. But if we just go up to 60, C63 takes us all the way to 87.6%. Yeah, substitute just takes way too long. No way it's good. So I think, I think I was, I honestly think like I played this first run pretty close to where it needs to be. So we fought, who did we fight? We fought optional trainers earlier on. Maybe they could be cut. I don't know. Like there's some Mount Moon stuff that could probably just get removed. Although the rival in Cerulean City was kind of a problem. But like, I'm like overkilling so much on these, like the second hit, like I got like eight to 19% there that I can remove and still two hit that. I'm gonna one hit this probably with the current ranges at 18, but if I two hit, that's fine. Maybe 18 is ideal here just to like make the Rattata a little bit easier. It does hit very hard with Hyper Fang. And like the, the four trainers that I fought or the three extra trainers I fought in Mount Moon are quick. With the exception of the super nerd, but he's not that bad. And his experience yields are quite good. 
come back, fight Misty. Body Slam is a one hit and then a two hit. Bubble Beam does not one hit even if it crits, so that's very consistent if we backtrack for that. Surge is like a two hit, right? Two hit, 4.2% 4, 4 chance to one hit. Then we have an easy section of the game, which is so nice to say for once. We could fight Erica earlier, but I I have a feeling Erica before Safari Zone will be a mistake. I'm gonna put her before the department store and see what happens with the ranges. So we don't have one hits on the Weeping Bell trainer that we wanna go through to get to her, the cool trainer, and then Erica is all two hits. And even if you're a fire type, this can fall apart because she can use sleep powder on you. I don't think it's worth it. Because if I go through Cycling Road first and Pokemon Tower, I gain a lot of experience and then I come to this at a, at a higher level and then uh, Erica is now oh, still all two hits. I'm level, I'm six levels higher though, so I have so much more resistances. And the cool trainer is all one hits now, so we save three turns in battle here. And this is less likely to be a reset. If we get the money from Erica's fight, it doesn't help in the department store because the Carbos is ineffective because we're using too many throughout the playthrough anyways with the amount of training that I'm doing in the mid game. I'm not gonna backtrack to the department store because that would just waste time. And the next location that makes sense is Sylph anyways. Although for Sylph, I think we can make a major change by fighting all of these trainers. And then we need to see what our level up spread is here. Uh, how close we are to leveling up. Sorry, just a second, I gotta make the, the screen a little bit bigger. Yeah. By the way, we know why this program uh, is so slow and sluggish now. It's because it's optimized for Linux, not for uh, Windows, this UI wrapper. So uh, Otto, is, Otto is thinking about that and we're gonna work on it to make it better so it's snappier for everyone to use. Does for good AI use Sleep Powder Stun Spore still? Oh, that's a good point. I actually still don't, I still don't think it matters though. What's the advantage of beating Erica? I, there's more backtrack time in the overworld fighting her early. It doesn't make sense. Because when you dig out of the Safari Zone, you're teleported right to the Pokemon Center, then you just walk straight to the gym. You would have to do all of that walking anyways to get to Erica. And then you fly away from the gym, skipping the second half of the walking. So I don't think there's any reason to fight Erica earlier than I was already doing. Huh, I'd use Linux. I don't know how, though. I've never used Linux, so. It's easy to say something's trash, but, like, really, it's, uh, it comes down to the fact that, like, people have things that they're used to, and, and they gotta, like, you gotta do what you gotta do. I wanna see, I think there's one trainer in Sylph that I didn't fight that I could fight that might level me up one more time. That would give me a more convenient, uh, a more convenient way to use use my candies this person Voltorb coughing magneton yeah so if I fight that person I do level up one more time is there a rocket that I can remove here like the two machop guy did I fight him I hope I didn't fight him he's bad I don't think I fought him yeah I didn't fight him I fought electrode muck though can I take that out no that prevents me from leveling up okay is there a cycling road trainer that I can take out that will get me a level up in a different place. Who's the worst person here? Let's see, experience per second. This person, what does he have? Mankey Primeape, take out the Mankey Primeape guy. Now do we level up after this person? We do, after final Pokemon on that person. So we've removed a trainer, we still get the same level. That's 42 before the rival, so I can use rare candies. I can use seven of them to get to 49. Fight the rival at 49. Go into Koga's gym. Level up to 52 after the second Tamer, but I'm gonna fight him after Juggler. That will get me 52 for Koga, which means I have Flamethrower. Then we go to Blaine. Blaine. If we don't need rest for the champion, we can use rest here or we can take rest out.
Oh yeah, let's see. Uh, what's my speed stat here for Giovanni? This time level 54, but I haven't used the rare candies and I should have three because I used seven. That's correct. If I use three, then we are 57. We speed tie the Doug Trio. Okay, we need one more. Or we need to use one less earlier. Or we need to not use them before the rival in Sylph. What is that like? How bad is this fight? This fight's not that bad, but like, I bet with the rare candies it's so much easier. Mmm. It's like, it's fine. It's fine. This fight's not great. Either way, it's not great. Yeah, the Fire-type Gym Leader can also be an inconsistent fight for Water-type Pokémon or Rock-type Pokémon. It's really hilarious. Blaine is very good. Very, very, very good. And there's not a lot of play around him. Like, Mimic is basically useless in that fight. I think, yeah, Reflect for Blaine is probably the strongest strat. I'm thinking, like, I can just, like, go, like... Because Fire Spin is basically useless, um, especially if I have a do the candies here before the rival, like, Fire Spin is going to be... Um, wait, what? Oh, that's the Kogu candies. But yeah, if I do the candies here, like, even Clamp here is just, it's just not doing that much per hit. I should survive one hit of it, so then I can move on. But I can, I can go Ember, Rest, Reflect, Body Slam, which basically solves everything throughout the mid game. And then I can replace Reflect with Mimic for Giovanni. And I will out. I think I will outspeed that. Yeah, I outspeed all of Blaine's team if I uh, if I level up like this. It's just like he's still just hard because he can mess you up a lot of ways. Confuse, Ray, growl, then reflect if you're a physical attacker. He can also crit with takedown, that kind of thing. He's he's good. He can flinch with stomp if he's faster. I think maybe for Giovanni, I want to fight one more trainer in his gym and add that trainer back in. But like adding in a better trainer. The first cool trainer is pretty good. And the this cool trainer is also pretty good. Usually this guy is better, but I don't level up if I fight just him. Do I have to fight two? Aw. Oh. Uh, ah. 44 experience to the next level. That's heartbreaking. Okay, six rare candies here. Then I level up on this fight, then I can use four rare candies here. Get a little 58 for Giovanni. Then I outspeed everything on his team. Mimic Earthquake can tank a hit. One shot, one shot, one shot, one shot, two shot. Earthquake from Rhydon deals 93 to 110 damage. Maybe I keep Reflect for this fight. So Mimic Earthquake, Knockout Doug Trio, set up Reflect on the Persian, Flamethrower, Earthquake, Earthquake, and then here. And then Rival... Six is not really an issue. We get to Lorelei. Then this takes us to Lance at level 63. I have a ridiculous chance to knock out the Gyarados. Then we go into the champion at level 65. And we can play with the Fire Blast Flamethrower strategy with Mimic. Larian's attack in the Alakazam in this fight. Flareon's attack is uh, 243 and the Alakazam's uh, defense is 67. Yeah, I can just keep Reflect, I think. There's also the potential to actually Reflect in the champion fight. Reflect, like, so like, if we keep Reflect instead of Rest, like, just ditch Rest. Um... Let me just think about this, actually. There's like a move thing. You can't see it right now, but like it's a... 
It's a window that pops up that allows you to um, see the moves from the run. I'll bring it up for all of you. There you go. So this thing shows us the moves as they're learned throughout the run. So then you can get a better global perspective on exactly how to play the playthrough. So like what we could do here is we're going to teach um, reflect and rest earlier on to make the mid game just a little bit more stable. Then though for Giovanni we can teach mimic in the place of rest, keep reflect. We could keep that move set then. We could just as soon as we I guess like before fighting Giovanni even we can just replace we can get fire blast. Like after Sabrina, delete body slam, get fire blast. Like what do we need body slam for in the league? We're going to flamethrower all of Lorelai's Pokémon, flamethrower all of the hikers Pokémon. Flamethrower, all of Agatha's Pokemon. Uh, oh, we need Body Slam for Lance. Never mind, we have to keep Body Slam. Can't do that. None of that. So we have to leave off Fire Blast. We could have Reflect. We could get two Reflect TMs though, and we could teach Fire Blast in the place of Reflect, and then Reflect in the place of Body Slam for the champion after defeating Lance. Because then Reflect can be used turn one on the Sand Slash. It'll minimize damage, take it down to like, uh, how much? Uh, two, that it's roughly equivalent to two defense girls. So then we'll, lo we'll lose like less than half. Reflect, lose less than half. Ah. We're going to lose the same amount either way. And then without, ref without rest, we're not going to want to heal. I think it just makes sense to tank the hit. It's faster. Tank the hit, mimic earthquake, knock the Alkazam out, rest, flamethrower, um, and sweep. Wait, what? Why is my flamethrower... Oh, because I badge boosted. That's why. That, these are the damage ranges. Don't ignore the other damage ranges. They had badge boosts glitch in them. Would quick attack be enough to one-shot the Alakazam? 100% not. I can check, though. Uh, the window is not large enough right now. What, what do I teach in the place of quick attack? Mimic. Nope. Quick Attack is doesn't even have a guaranteed two hit on the Alakazam. Okay. I'm going to get some water, then we're doing it in a second run. Do it. One second, almost ready. All right, what do people predict? I'm gonna say optimistically 48 minutes. Let's go. I think we're gonna have less problems in this run. I think I got very unlucky the first time. Like I saved, I would save like 30 to 40 seconds, just not resetting to the Rivalon route on Nugget Bridge, Route 24. Gyarados and Snorlax, I also think the Dragonite line learns it by level up. Isn't it? Let's go. I'm warmed up now too, so hopefully I'm playing better.
try-hard mode engaged. My voice is feeling tired, so if I don't talk that much, apologies. Gotta keep the voice feeling good for... for narration. I also play way better when I don't talk. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, one setup move would make Flare End so much better. Imagine if we got Amnesia. This thing would be insane. Be like one of the best Pokemon in the game. The fire types in Gen 1 are like so close to being fantastic. They are so close. But they just, they're just not quite there. Oops. Ah, uh, gosh. Uh, please don't KO. Darn. Okay, quick attack is the answer. Huh. Yeah, exceptional. And it's also like, uh, talking is also hard because I'm reading the chat, so I'm like looking away from the game for moments, and like when the game runs as fast as it does, when you look away for like a tiny fraction of a second, you can like teach explosion in slot one or something like that. The most painful of the mistakes. Lucky I didn't get an encounter there. Ran through a little bit of the grass. It gets growth by a stadium? Are you kidding me? It gets growth by a stadium? Really? I'm gonna look this up after. Does it get growth by a stadium? That's sweet. That's such a good move. Okay, that was the perfect Geodude. Immediately burnt, he lost his turn. Uh, cut its attack and then knocked it out with a crit. Like, really good Brock. Okay. This is what I was expecting when I started the stream, but then Brock was like, actually, no. I'm not going to let you do that. Okay. How fast we can we get through this route? So let's go. Youngster Ben is actually... He's problematic sometimes. This guy. Gosh. His Ekans. Terrifying. Try to trust my results. I work hard. Uh, that... Uh, hard work is not necessarily... Uh, meaning good results, though. Do remember that. But don't necessarily trust my results. Verify my results. Uh, I'll heal. We might be able to cut this. Growth is trade back from Gen 2. Oh, that's still really good, though. Like, just access to growth is, is so good. I have a 41% chance to 2 hit this. Oh, well, we got it with the burn. Sweet. And this is a guaranteed two hit. Those are the slowest Pokemon that I fight here. Did I fight the last? Yeah, I fought the last. Three, three quick trainers. There's also a bug catcher near the entrance. I used to fight him a lot because I thought I was like super smart for finding this trainer that's like kind of obscure and off to the side. But he's really bad. Don't fight him. Don't let your ego get involved. That was a, a little bit stressful right there. Don't want to bump into that guy. Flareon probably does learn Mud Slap. I'd be surprised if it doesn't. Pretty sure uh, Espeon and Umbreon get Mud Slap. 
Alright, let's go. Oh, gotta heal up. Next fight gets real messy if you don't heal status conditions. The Ekans can wrap you and then the status condition stacks up on every turn. Uh, the percent chance, chance to two hit does not account for potential burn damage, no. It accounts for accuracy and crits, but not burn damage. Okay. Level 18. This is what we need. Let's hope we don't get a reset to the rival. Come on. No sand attack from the Santru. It's a two hit, so no sand attack from the Santru. That's what's going to happen. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, Professor Maple, that would be a great in-game name. Okay, please, 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 please. Yes, Miss Sand Attack. Miss Sand Attack is even better. One hit the Rattata, and then three hit the Eevee. This is great. Oh, well, that, that was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to quick attack, but either way we win. And this is good. Two hits on both of these. Quick attack can be an issue here. Or sorry, sand attack can be an issue here. I'm gonna put quick attack in that spot so I can utilize it a little bit more. Oh nice. Uh potentially the uh Zubat can be problematic here by supersonic. Like that. Luckily didn't hit myself. Yeah, sweet, it crit that one too. Uh, just do this to conserve PP. We're on fire, we don't wanna deplete our reserves already. A mar like really conserving your PP efficiently on this route does pay off a lot. Like if I can get through here without depleting Ember, and then move on to the next section of the game with the elixir and the ether. I don't have to center before going south. Which does save time, because then I only single center in Cerulean. And save a significant amount of walking time, like looping around the center. It's like maybe five to six seconds. But like, all that stuff matters. And like obviously I want Ember here for the Geodude. Like, oh well we don't need it again. Perfect. Only one Ember needed. So now we get the elixir. I, I'm hoping I can save it. I think I can. Because Flareon has great attack. Come on. Yeah, quick attack is a guaranteed two hit on both of these, so I don't need to use Ember. Uh, Ember's a one hit on this. And uh, um, like a 95.5% chance on the Ekans, so I will use it there. I think it's going to be better damage ranges here. Yeah, Ember is guarantee on all three of these, whereas Quick Attack has a chance to fail the KO, so I'll just use up the remainder of my Ember PP, and then I'll uh, use the Elixir. It'll give me back more Quick Attack as well, because I've been using some of it. And that's another advantage. If you're distributing your usage of PP between multiple moves, um, then uh, you replenish all of them at the same time, rather than uh, using... Like really going deep with uh, PP on one move, and then uh, you don't. When you replenish it, you don't like use the elixir. You don't replenish the other move. Uh, I should have quick attacked. By the way, it's ninety six percent chance to two hit with quick attack, so I got the three hit there for a player error. First run time was fifty one fifty one. Let's go. I'm not saving here. I believe. 30, 39% chance to one hit with Ember, by the way. I, I should probably quick attack on turn two if I do not one hit. Oh, this is bad. So bad. Of course, one, one accuracy drop does that. I missed like five moves. But you see, I still have my I still have my Ember, right? Or sorry, I still have my Ether. 
And I can use that on Ember to continue. Uh, no. Don't do that. Don't play badly. Uh, nope. Don't play badly. I can open my inventory once here after defeating this with the final two uses of Ember or Quick Attack. Ember has more PP, so I don't have to use it. But I can teach Body Slam at the same time. Uh, Tail Whip is irrelevant. I should have just unlearned it earlier. Then I can heal. And I'll heal to full because I have to fight the Water Guy next. I am going to do him next even though it's a little bit more walking. I just don't want to forget. Forgetting would make me more sad than anything else. And yeah, Body Slam is real good here. Guaranteed one hits. Get rest. Go. Fight the gentleman. I can't be burned, which is great. Sometimes you get burnt by the ponytail like three runs in a row and you just want to pull your hair out. I oh, look at our time. Our time's really good. It's a good time. Um... Ember is better against the Sand True, by the way. 57% chance to one hit. Body slam is only if you crit. Oh gosh. Okay, um... Look at my PP. I have... Eight uses of body slam left, so I'm going to be able to go to Misty and fight her without healing. Okay. Please, 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 please. Come on. Got it. Whew. Okay, uh, we can fight Surge too without healing and then teleport back. Great. We'll only have uh, only two heals in Cerulean. Which is great. I can just max potion this. Okay, let's go. It's a two hit with body slam. Potential for a one hit with a good crit range. Okay, well, that's like... I <laughs> uh, love when that happens. Paralyze him first turn, then move first, knock it out. It's great. This run's going really well. There's my second to heal. Get the bike poacher. Uh, Austin already has the software that uh, plays the song based on where we are dynamically in the game. Uh, I asked for like some upgrades to be made to it before I use it for streaming. Um, it'll be done at some point. I don't, I don't know when. And then it really comes down to also like when I feel like I have time to test it out adequately to know that it's going to be a good experience for all of you. I do need to replace this track with a version that doesn't have the sound effects. Do that soon. I'm gonna save here because you gen one miss on the the growlet, uh, the cubone, and then things get real bad. <sighs> Should have used attack. Sorry, reading the thing. 
overtraining throughout. It would be interesting to see if you end up saving time with one hits. I, I think you do save time. Like, uh, I've said that before, like, in, in my runs. Like, I think in some cases, uh, training early on is better because you actually end up getting the compound results of the training throughout the rest of the playthrough. So you get more one hits, you get more stable fights, less resets, that sort of thing. So training early on is not as bad as people think it is. Because a lot of people are just like, well, you should always train on the highest level Pokemon. Like, yeah, okay, that does make sense. So beat Brock on minimum battles, go through everything on minimum battles until you get to a problem. But like, that doesn't end up actually being the case because it's really nice to be able to one hit a whole bunch of things on Nugget Bridge by fighting like three more people, something like that. Also, this was a great fight. Like, this was a sweep. He did nothing. So I'm above the opinion that early training is, is quite good. Okay. We clear the cave under 18 minutes, so that's really good. Oh yeah, we've already solved Heart Gold Soul Silver. Uh, also Black and White, and Black and White too. All of the DS games are working now. I could make an overlay for them in like four to six hours, but that would really distract from a lot of the other work that has to be done. So I, I don't have time to do that currently. Really, like the the tech problems for everything up until. Uh, like 3DS games is all uh, solved. We're just uh, I just don't want to go too fast and introduce like every game to the channel all at once. Medium fast growth rates. Have you considered doing a portion of candies in the middle levels? Uh, I don't try to optimize my candies based on the growth rate that much for second playthroughs. It's more like where do we absolutely need them during the fights? I haven't gone to spin. I got a little bit sick this week, so I didn't go to spin class. Uh, optimizing for rare candies with like fluctuating growth rate Pokemon and stuff like that, that makes way more of a difference. But with medium fast, it's just kind of like the growth rate is like pretty linear. In general, like it doesn't make a ton of sense to overthink it, in my opinion. Well, I gotta get Ice Beam to sell. Yeah, no more six guy we need. Don't worry, I was playing Pokemon when I was sick. I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> you can't stop me. Nothing stops me. I'm on a mission to be the best. No one ever was. To collect all the data is my real test. Uh, I used to ski. I snowboarded a little bit too, but I preferred skiing, but. I think skiing is easier. And I'm not like going on the mountain to be like, I'm gonna challenge myself. Like I'm gonna have a good time. But I have uh, I have not gone since I got into music because the idea of falling down and breaking your wrist and stuff like that, uh, I just couldn't. So, 
I decided not to ski anymore. <laughs> wow. Okay, these gas here are kind of being a nightmare. Uh, I don't really have any good healing items. I'm just gonna have to chance this. I don't like that. Really don't like that. It's gonna get me. Yeah, first reset. So like, I can go down to the floor below, but then I'll have to use another repel. And I just don't want to. Like, it's pretty simple. And like, even if you reset, you have to use a repel though, so I don't know. It's hard to know if I made the right choice there. In general, I dislike backtracking it if I can avoid it. I might like fresh water, I don't know. But I'm in a bad position because I had to use the uh, four store earlier. Please don't sludge me. Just don't sludge me. Smog is fine. No, that's not fine. Alright, so we fell apart here. Uh, skiing is not back on the table as a professional YouTuber because now I need my hands to play the game, so I'm not going to chance it. Doesn't make sense. Well, this doesn't make sense anymore. Like, obviously I should be going back and healing, but I'm not going to go back and heal now. I've committed, so, like, like going back and healing after two resets, it's just like, well, you're, like, already this far. Like, it's bad. You shouldn't have done it. Make the better play next time. I say this a lot because I think people get frustrated when they see me, like, bashing my head against a wall when I'm in, uh... No, 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 the fresh water wastes time, too, because then I have to go up to the top of the department store and buy a new one. Because I need it. We just, uh, we just have to keep pressing on and win like this. Yeah, totally sunk cost, exactly. Like, what makes more sense here is, like, if I have, like, one or two more resets, like, uh, the thing that makes more sense is restarting the run, which is what I'm gonna do. Okay, here we go again. Oops, sorry. Okay, that was a good run, but it's not gonna work out for us. Cause like, okay, so like the thing is, is like the sunk cost fallacy would actually be if I like continued through that area and was just like well I made it this far and it was a good run like I need to keep going it's like well in this case it just makes sense for like to just restart no 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 I Jesse and James have added my runs like a lot in the past especially with Pokemon like Parasect they're a nightmare for for Parasect especially in that battle Parasect really struggles there oh the rooting software is not correct sorry gotta restart again Wait, we can take this time to, to add something. One second. Okay, I think this will work. I'm not entirely sure. No, it's not working. Should work. But it's not. Okay, never mind. We can't have a bonk counter, unfortunately. As I suspected, it is not operational. Okay.
Well, Jesse and James beat us because we didn't have any healing items. And I refused to use my fresh water because I need it for getting into the, uh, what's it called? Uh, saffron. Hmm. It's like a, it's a compounding effect of like a bunch of smaller little things that are happening earlier on that you don't realize are actually uh, going to cause problems later on. And then it all conspires against you in a fight like that where you're like, this fight shouldn't be that hard. But it ends up being hard because you're lacking one item. The, the correct choice, I think, was as soon as the second, as soon as I defeated the second Ghastly, I should have gone back down to the, the floor and healed. I should have been decisive about that though, but like being indecisive in a follow-up attempt when you're trying to push for a PB doesn't make sense. Like, just restart the run if you've been indecisive. In a first playthrough, of course, I would have used my fresh water there right away. Like, that would have been the first thing I would have done. I would have been like, oh, this isn't going to work. Okay, fresh water, let's see if I can do it with the fresh water. If that didn't work, I would have gone back down to the floor before it. But like we we need the run to have no resets at Jesse and James. Like if there's a reset at Jesse and James, I think we just restart again. Like that's probably unacceptable. My prediction stays at 49.58. Okay. Hopefully I'll beat that. I'm hoping I'm going to beat that. It's interesting the the evolutions I think we think, I, I kind of feel intuitively like Jolteon should be better than Flareon because everyone gives Flareon like a ton of crap for being really bad, but Flareon's not actually really bad. It's really good in Generation 1. Much better than Jolteon. If you watch that stream, that stream was frustrating. This stream is not frustrating. Like, this one's fine. We haven't got to the point where I'm like ready to pull my hair out. 49-49 is what I want. Yeah, so we have 51-51 and then 41-41. 49-49. 47 would be like... I would be so happy if I got a 47 minute time. That would be... That would be outstanding. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Jolteon is artistically superior. That's true, Kevin. Jolteon is uh, my favorite evolution from a design perspective. It's bad. It's going to do a lot. Oh! Yes! Double burn! Oh my gosh, that was a great fight. This has to be the run, because that's hype. Oh yeah, I haven't talked about the Legends game, the new one. ZA or whatever it is, ZA. Depending on where you are, either one of those is correct. Um, yeah, I'll play it. I'm not like, I have to say I'm not super excited for it. Like le the Legends game, like Legends Arceus was really good. And I've definitely said that it's really good before in the past, but like Legends Arceus did not make me obsessed the way other games have in the past. And I, I'm like, I think what I'm hoping for is like, I really want that experience with a Pokemon game in the future where like when I start playing it, I'm just like, I can't stop playing this. If like, it's just like, it's so much fun and it's so engaging and I'm just like locked into it. That's what I really want. I want it to like trigger my hyper fixation essentially. And the Legends game did not do that. So I'm hoping, but like I can see like a lot of other people thinking like Legends Arceus did do that for them. I can see that because um, my fiance, who is now my wife, um, she was like so into it. So she's uh, very excited.
Okay. There's uh the nice thing about Flareon is it's this playthrough is not that taxing uh mentally and emotionally. Like other playthroughs are really emotionally taxing where like you have to get through a lot of hurdles early game that are like just luck based and there's nothing you can do about it. I don't know. You start with Sonic Boom, for example. But if you don't have uh, an awful luck-based gauntlet early on, the only luck here I have in the early game really feels like Brock. Everything else feels pretty solid. Then the next luck is the rival, but we've stabilized him by this little bit of training in, in Mount Moon. So I, I feel like Flareon is like, like, it's quite simple and straightforward to play. It feels relaxing because of that. Um, and now knowing that like I don't need to be perfect and I can have a reset against Lance and not do it zero resets all the time. If you give yourself that um, that leeway, then even that fight is not not that that awful. Oh gosh, the guy blocked my way and messed everything up. I'm just gonna no save the rival. It's uh might be a restart, but I accept that risk. Feeling pretty confident. Leer is not great. Would have preferred a growl. Okay, sand attack. Well, we risked it, but we still could be okay. Just one sand attack's not the end of the world. Like it's when it, it starts stacking up. Like the first one causes you to miss, then you, um, then like they get the like the second and the third, and it's like okay, we just fell apart. Like it spiraled out of control. Um, yeah. Uh, for anyone who tuned in since the start of the stream, you may be curious to go back to the beginning and listen to what I had to say about the updates for Pokemon Platinum and performance, as well as my computer upgrades. Uh, maybe you're also curious about tier list updates for Generation 1, which I have made since, I guess, the last video. Also, Scott, are you looking forward to finishing the yellow decks? Yeah, I am. I'm looking forward to finishing yellow. It'll be, it's kind of, it's going to be like bittersweet though, because this game is really fun and I don't necessarily want to stop playing it, but you can only, like, I don't want to just continue playing the game, even though I've like outstayed my welcome. So Probably quick attack some of these Pokemon exclusively just to save Ember PP, even though Ember can one hit with crits. I'm gonna use the elixir this time. Oops. Well, it's not great, but uh Flareon has good attack, so it's only gonna take like an extra three or four turns. Backports. Yeah, of course. I'll, I'll keep doing all that stuff. I mean, I would say my welcome on, like, for all of you. Like, if you want to see me play Flareon for, like, six years to come, like, then, okay, sure. I'll keep doing it, but... Because it's still fun for me as long as I can continue to get better results. We have more episodes than The Simpsons. Yeah. How many episodes, like, how many seasons has The Simpsons? It's like 25 years or something. It's so many. Can't uh, dig or fly back from there in yellow version, by the way. Here's the time loss I was talking about before. So we started this at around uh, 10.02. And that, that save or heal there is going to take us roughly 10 seconds, 8 seconds. Ember is a two hit here. I made this mistake last time not using quick attack against the drowsy, so I'm going to do that this time. Good, it missed hypnosis. Perfect. Oh. Okay. 
Don't feel like risking this. Pokemon Channel is the best Pokemon. Is that a Pokemon game? I don't know what Pokemon Channel is. Crobat and Crystal. I don't think it's going to be very good, though. I used a Crobat when I was a kid in Crystal because I love the idea that it, it needed to love me to, like, evolve. I was like, that's so cute. I got to train one of these. But it's not very good. Its move pool is just sh so shallow. I don't even know if it improves in Gen 3. I think it really only starts improving in, in Generation 4. Okay, I'm going to try and play this ideally and not get Body Slime now. I'll get it when I come back. I only have to walk that one section of hallway twice. Well, yeah, twice instead of three times. Ninjask. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Steven is going to be so much fun with Ninjask. Please, one hit with the Ember. 57%. Oh, come on. <laughs> Both times. There's a GameCube game. Oh, Pokemon Chanel. What? Like fashion in Pokemon? Am I missing something? I didn't forget it. Everyone, please say kind things. I didn't forget it. I haven't done yellow in Ninjask. I, I, yellow, Ninjask in yellow. No, I haven't. I haven't done that back for either. Like it's not done. Dig for Steven. That's painful. Okay, so like here's a here's a small error that I made in my previous playthrough. We're going to talk about it now. So in the previous playthrough, remember when I said I dug back to Cerulean and I'm like, I don't need to heal here because I have enough PP. Mistake. If I had healed in the center instead of using the max potion, I would have had the max potion at the top of the tower and been able to use it to not backtrack to the healing pad and also to defeat Jesse and James with some degree of consistency. So what I thought was an optimization, it, w it would have been actually better if I played just a little bit sloppier early in, er earlier into the game. That sloppiness would have uh, actually given me a benefit later on. Wow, that was fairly close against Misty. I'm going to heal one more time before heading south to Surge just to preserve the max potion because I know that it has utility in the mid game now. Oh god. He's probably so bad you could just fight him without saving, but <laughs> I'm terrified he like crits with Thunderbolt, it paralyzes, then he one shots with Mega Kick or something like that. Like that did a lot. Let's be fair. The Mega Kick is not to be It's a good move. We're gonna have like way more saves in Cerulean, bleed about like twenty seconds from that, but We're still getting a decently competitive time here. Under 15 minutes is very good. I heal again. Yeah, Shedinja will also be fun. We one hit with Ember or Body Slam. So I think Ember is the better choice because it has more PP. Always use the move that has more PP first. Uh, unless it can't one hit. That seems, that's like, it feels to me like good logic. Like you want to deplete the power points of that move first so that you save the power points. The other move that's more even, then you can kind of distribute them uh, later in the roots. You don't want to get into a scenario where you have like no PP left on Body Slam and then. 
Anyone else know about that? Oops. Don't do that. Don't do that. But Ember is an extra text turn. It's not actually. Like, it's technically because you have to stop, like, your inputs, and that's a little bit slower, but uh, that's such a negligible factor. That really only matters if you, you're, like, so precise. that super potion that I picked up. Wait, yeah, I used the repel. I was scared to use the repel. Let's get like more wild encounters, bleed more time. Okay, so I've been talking about having rest in the mid game. It just makes sense to teach rest for this fight. Just in case. It, it was like, if he explodes all of his Pokemon, like that's frustrating, but if you have rest, you'll win. But if you don't, then you'll lose and have a reset. Whereas it just like, it can come through here and help. Oh no. Oh, we're good. If he, if he crits with that, it's brutal. Okay. I could not beat the game with my eyes closed. There are like complete, yeah, blind runs are completely different. I think if I had like described video, I could beat the game. Because I know it very well. Like if you describe things to me, I can know what to do next. Like locations based on like tiles, stuff like that. Like I can figure it out. Yeah, rest should be a field move if milk drink. Yeah, I agree. Imagine if rest is a field move, healed your Pokemon, but it put it to sleep, just like it does in battle. I think that would be cool. Because then there's like a downside. You have to use an item or something to, to take the status off, but you can still heal whenever you want. That'd be sweet. Yeah, the ta the uh, input task on the blind one for Fire Red is really cool on YouTube. Love it. This rare candy almost always makes sense to pick up. Skipping it is just like you're really trying to go for a low game time at the cost of consistency. Oh. You get two fresh water here so you can buy the Ice Beam and then sell it and then get three Carbos. Oops. Brought something. Want Reflect, of course. Yeah, Karen should have Tyranitar. I completely agree. It would be... It also would have made her feel, like, I think more memorable to me, even if she wasn't, like, a better trainer. And she is definitely the best trainer in the league, but, like, I think she would have just stuck out way more, and I would have been like, wow, like, that's really impressive. Look at this cool Pokemon that she has. Ike, you're going to disapprove of my moveset. I understand. It's okay. I forgive you.
Uh, Jiro's has a missing no video. Huh. Stop. I gotta heal after this fight so you don't have to worry about that status condition. I don't think I'm going to get sub 45 today, but uh, I'm trying to get sub 50 today. But not with rest. Definitely it can do it with rest. It just has such a constrained move set in the middle of the game. Or like not sorry, not constrained, just limited. So like having like um Yeah, my Vaporeon time is forty two right now. Like I got forty two Vaporeon. What was my Jolteon? My Jolteon was like fifty five or something, fifty four. I, I got bad results with Jolteon. I just like the luck was just not there. That's how Jesse and James are supposed to go. Don't use two. You buy enough. Don't do it. Kind of annoying. I don't mind fire types anymore. They're pretty good. I think I've like come around to, to like them a lot more than I used to. They don't feel as bad in yellow as they once did. Although I, I do have to say uh, Arcanine is, is kind of a nightmare, that Pokemon. <laughs> oh gosh. They really did not give it much. Remember, we cut that guy. I'm not gonna do that one. I'm gonna do that, but not too much investment. Yeah, there's just like so many fundamental problems with Arcanine, like slow growth rate. Like, it's really hard to fight against the slow growth rate. You can get good times, but like, you. There's just so much that you have to, like, push up against that's holding you back. Which is disappointing. So we're going to... Uh, we're going to Erika after this. Oh, it's 50% chance to knock it out, by the way. I'm saving PP on Body Slam so I don't have to heal before Erika. important as we saw before. Pretty good bike motion. Pretty happy with that. Crystal needs Sunflower Run? I know. I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
It does. I'm gonna waste time with that trash. Go. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <sighs> uh, okay, let's see. Does it use... Okay, she, it looks like she's locked into acid, so this is not gonna be a problem ever. Yeah, like Starmie is a really good slow growth rate mod. No, not there. You sounded gloomy beating up a gloom. Yeah. Okay, time to train. Oh, gosh. Jump Fluff is like so fast. I don't know why that Pokemon is as fast as it is. Ridiculous speed stat. <laughs> kind of hilarious. Okay, I only have a 48% chance to one-hit the goal bat. Hey, we got it. Nice. Yeah, I've considered YouTube Shorts. It's not a, like, a... It's not a format of content that I particularly like consuming myself, so I don't know if I would be, like, having fun making them, honestly. Like, I want to make sure that, like, the stuff I make is stuff that I would, like, also, like... Oh, no. No, please. Thank you. Oh. That would have been devastating. Uh, let's get the calcium. This can waste some time. I, I, it's probably not worth it. All things told. I'm glad someone noticed the overlay changes. The first person that said anything. Took me all day Monday to do that. <laughs> I like YouTube shorts. They're comforting and easy to easy to watch. Yeah, Ben. Actually, wow. The perfect person to say that. Uh, I'll go get the protein. Okay, I'll go back. I'll go to the healing room this way. If you have enough PP or healing items, uh, it's better to go to the healing item. Better to go to the healing room this way. Because you can fight this person, then you can fight the Hypno Rocket. You can also dodge him so he doesn't catch you. You don't waste quite as much time that way. Ah, uh, it's it's going okay. Like, this run's all right. Uh, it's not amazing, but no resets, so nothing to complain about that much right now. Oh, Pip run. Oh, God. No, no, no. That one will come out at a special moment at some point. Hop Pip's pretty bad. Yeah, I ignore videos that are too short as well. I'll like see it and it's just like, oh, it's 12 minutes. I'm not going to watch that. Like, Now I know if I put it on, I'm going to have to... Um, if I put it on, I know that I'm going to have to uh, like pay attention and like tab out of whatever I'm doing to like go back and change it in like five minutes. And it's like, that's not, that's not fun. Uh, Hikari, that's kind of offensive. Let's not say that. Uh, Sol, can you delete that comment for me, please? Thanks. Okay, level up to 42. Then seven rare candies. Level 49. Of course, no to Lear. 49. Where are we? Use this, and then use this. And then use this. 
Okay, let's go. Come on, clamp. Yeah, miss. That's what we needed. <laughs> hey, we could fire spin it like we did last time, but I just don't like that. I think this is consistent enough. I think actually fire spinning it might... You might uh, ruin your run by attempting the the fire spin there. Okay. Habro vs. Gassy vs. Machop vs. Geodude. The grand finale of my series. Oops. Uh. Yeah, Rapidash. Rapidash also gets Horn Drill, though. I think that might be better than Fire Spin. Okay, Giovanni defeated. Get out of here. Heal. Koga. And we're going to fight the two optional tamers here to get 52 so that we have Flamethrower for him. Uh, the overlay has more information on the right-hand side of the screen now. See? Yeah, crit. That was not a one-hit without a crit, by the way. Oh. Hopefully we're okay, we're okay. What are you dreading when it comes to Gen 3? Uh, Gen 3 is not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Uh, but just any Pokemon that struggles against Steven, like, it's always brutal whenever you just get a good time at Wallace or something like that, and then Steven just stops you, like, dead in your tracks. Ah, uh, Steven's really good. Yeah, enemy move power is there, enemy typing, move typing is now there, and then all the stats got labels. And then the modifiers got changed in how they're implemented. Plus, the text of the move names is uh, now left aligned, and all of the UI graphics got a uh, uh, reskin so that they look a little bit nicer. The old ones were a little bit cheap looking, so I took some time and redid the SVG files. Talk to the boulder, that's the strat. This should be fairly simple. And this, see, this is the last Carbos I can use. So buying one more would not have helped. Uh, speaking of next run, I think I may be able to switch back to like protein or something like that. Because if we're not going to outspeed the Alakazam, then does the do the Carbos actually matter? Like, maybe not. Do I need this? No. Okay, let's go. Yeah, horsey has been done. Quite a while ago, actually. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Don't do this to me, Blaine. Don't do this to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is how we do. Easy. Thank you. 
Let's go. Sabrina, I'll outspeed the first two. Don't outspeed the Alakazam, but I have a 64% chance to knock it out. X defend, that's going to bring it down. Paralyze, that's enough though. Good. Okay. I think I might fight an additional trainer here to level up because I use seven rare candies and I only have three now. So I want 58 for Giovanni. Uh, it's gonna take two trainers, kind of annoying. This guy has the best experience in the gym. Fight the Nido King guy as well. My way back over. No, rock resists fire, ground does not. Come on. Oh, I hate that. That is bad optimization. Okay, we'll have to look at this again. I think I just need to use one less for... No, then I don't get the flamethrower. How did I do it? Hmm, I don't remember. Well, we'll look at the root file after. Figure out what exactly went wrong there. Now I outspeed all of Giovanni's Pokemon. Teach Mimic. Let's go. Uh, that's annoying. I think we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose. Yep. Oh, there's an alternative strategy here, which I don't want to use, but we can. So we can just set up like this and then we're going to care less about what comes following in the fight because we also get badge boosts. So now Flamethrower is more powerful. We can just sweep through his team. Really wanted the Earthquake strategy to be to be it, but this is this seems better. No, I, I had the Rust Trainer in this this run. I'm not exactly sure. No, don't do that. The Flareon is locked into Smog or Leer. Darn. No Paralyze Heal. I was hoping there was a Paralyze Heal. I don't want to run into a Fero and have it trap me in the battle and drill pick. <laughs> the fear of the Fero is real right now. We got two patches we have to, or I guess four patches we have to get through to negate the Furos. Okay, we're good now. Yeah, Cloister has really bad special. And then in Generation 2 it has bad special defense. You never want to attack the Cloister with a physical move. It's like almost always better to just hit it with a special move. Even when it resists the special move. Like sometimes with water types you have body slam or a water move and the water move is usually the right choice.
Uh, Brick Break is probably the better choice in Gen 3, because the Cloister doesn't have particularly good moves in Generation 3, so you don't have to be as scared of it. It doesn't have, like, Ice Beam and stuff like that, which is why it's terrifying in this game. Uh, that got me. I think I skipped a trainer, and I might pay for that. Did I skip a trainer? I think I skipped the person in the first area that I was supposed to fight. We're gonna fight this guy, and then we're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna hope. I think we should be fine. We're medium fast. Okay. Time right now is good. Even with the one mistake. Yeah, Hyper Beam is never a good choice. Well, well. I think there are actually a couple situations where it is a good choice. Um... And if you like playing, like, if your goal is to play as consistent as possible, Hyper Beam can be very good. Thanks for the, all the withdraws, slow bro. Perfect. Um, yeah, Hyper Beam is, like, I think, I think, like, if you play it really well, it's, like, seven minutes or eight minutes to, oh, sorry, Hyper Beam is, like, six minutes to obtain, and then Substitute is, like, eight. Substitute is just, like, always bad. I'm wasting time here, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, level 68, I believe, is where medium fast is faster than medium slow. Takes a while. That's when, like, the total experience earned becomes uh, more for the, the medium slow growth rate. Look at this time. Time's really good. Uh, honestly, the sub 40... Sub 45 feels like much more uh, reasonable now that I've played this run. Like, uh, just like Flareon is really good. Uh, a lot of luck has to lie. I think a lot of luck, like you, there's a lot of areas of the game where you can go through just a little bit faster, getting like better uh, damage ranges, maybe getting better crits, those sort of things. Not getting paralyzed as much, not having to use as many items. All of that stuff will shave off like a minute of time cumulatively throughout the run. So if I could do a bunch of stuff better then then that would that would pay off. And probably get this to sub 45, but uh, it's not there right now. And here we go, Lance. Hopefully we get lucky. Or we have a two hit on the Gyarados, so I guess we just need luck after it goes down. Or we should have a two hit if we get the range. Yeah, we got the range. Okay, good. Let's go. Come on. Oh gosh, that's really annoying. I think I lose this one, I'm just gonna reset. Because the next Dragonair is going to use Bubble Beam, and then the Aerodactyl is going to hit me, and the Dragonair is going to hit me. I think it's better to just restart. Yeah! Okay, well, this is good. This is the best possible scenario. Yeah, that, okay, wow. Um, Lance. Lance is useless. Apparently, Lance is bad. Look at that. Oh. Oh. Well, that did a lot, but we're okay. Okay. All right, time for some meme strats. Ready for this? Where is she? There. <laughs> I love this. This is such a quirky final set. No! 
annoying. Look at my speed. <laughs> I have to be level 66. We gotta root in level 66. I don't think it makes sense to try this another time like this. Look at the speed. This speed is painful. Uh, just full health recover. Thank you. And now we win. Stop barraging, please. Oh, gosh. Fine. Just go for it. Maybe I should have just gone for it from the start. Save time. Please. Thank you. Whew. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. 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 Oh, my gosh. Ah. <sighs> ah. <sighs> um. All right. That's a 46 minute time. Just barely, but I'm very happy with this. Um, obviously it can go down more. I think we've proved that. Like there's some resets here that I had that are not great. Also, I think, um, I think uh, rooting in the outspeed on the Alakazam is, is obvious. That just, like, I should probably do that. And fi figure out, like, one more, one more, uh... Yeah, I did, like, a metal scream there. That's what I thought right after I did it. I was like, wow, I was like, back to my metal days. Uh, it's not very good for my voice, though, so I'm not good at doing it. Um, anyways. I think, yeah, like, getting... The outspeed on the Alakazam might be might be a good idea at the end there. But in the end, it's like I even just like like how consistent Lance is now because of Flareon's incredible attack stat. Just that, um I'm not even I don't even have that much of a problem just rolling the dice a little bit against the champion for a for a good time. Yeah, speed tie at 66. But like obviously like speed tie at 66 is is way better than uh than than not. Yeah, I used to play in metal bands as as a in high school. Um and then a bunch of punk bands before that. Huh. Okay, let's talk about where this place is it. So with the time 46 minutes, 59 seconds. We have improved Flareon's ranking substantially from the B tier into the A tier. Feels really good to have done that. Now Flareon is just behind Parasect and just ahead of Ghastly. So it went like significantly further forward. Now, of course, I'm going to re re-rank Ninetales. Ninetales will easily be an S tier Pokemon. Um, I think... I guess it would be the first fire type in the S tier right now. I do think that Ninetales... I think Ninetales is the best fire type in the game. I don't think that there's much to say. It's the fire type that has the highest special stat, and it also gets flamethrower, so it's just like... Yeah, Ninetales is going to be good. Um, I don't remember if it gets flamethrower if you start fully evolved, but... Ninetales is, is quite good. So I, I think it'll get an S tier placement. Um, interestingly enough... Uh, I think that with more optimization, I can probably get Magmar, sneak Magmar ahead of Moltres. Ninetales into the S tier. Probably now Flareon into the S tier as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, if I work on all of them, like, it'll, they'll all get in the S tier or something. The all fully evolved Pokemon will, will eventually just, like, the results will trend closer and closer and closer to like sub 45 as I get better and better and work on like and collect more and more results also we roll the dice more times so being behind Parasect Parasect is actually really good though I'll probably have to redo it at some point on stream uh, I think I can maybe get a better result with it now after after some time but that might be uh, also like ego talking because I think I've improved a lot but 
maybe we did do a good job of figuring it out when when everyone like put all their minds together um yeah well this was fun i hope everyone had a great time uh if you haven't yet seen it at the beginning of the video i showed some stuff about platinum and um i will say it again though here uh this weekend the intent is to release electrode versus magneton on saturday at the regular time it may be the case that I stream during that time slot instead. If I stream, it's probably because the video just needs more time. I am not going to rush the release of it. It's a major video, so it doesn't. It's not gonna. It's not gonna feel good if I just push it out there for the sake of getting it out there. Um, So yeah, that's it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this stream. Hope you've enjoyed me um, re-ranking all the evolutions this month. We improved all three results. I would say the most disappointing was Jolteon. I did think I was going to get a time that was like 40, 40, like 40 minutes or 41 minutes with Vaporeon. Uh, for whatever reason, I just wasn't able to get it under 42, which is disappointing to me. But not nearly as disappointing as Jolteon. I... I I really struggled with it. It just like wasn't doing what I needed it to do. We ended up Jolteon uh, getting a time of 56 minutes and 4 seconds, which is still a roughly 5 minute improvement uh, over the previous result, but um, I still think it's worth investing more time into later to improve, but there's a lot of other Pokemon that I have to redo before then, specifically Arcanine, Rapidash, um, Lickitung, we'll probably have to get another chance sometime soon. Um, same with Mr. Mime. I think Mr. Mime is going to be, like, kind of busted when I do it again. Okay, thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed this. I really appreciate all of the support. Uh, letting me get new processors and stuff like that when I can't play Platinum with perfect frame rate. The person I bought the processor off was like, What are you going to play with it? Pokemon Platinum, that's what I'm playing. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyways, hope you all have a nice day. If you've made it this far, you are incredible. I'll see you in my next video.